Welcome to another episode of Paradise Chat. I'm your host, Mo. And I'm your host, Ryan. Today, we're joined by Super Bowl 50 champion Capri Bibbs, who played running back for not only the Denver Broncos, but the Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers. So, Capri, thank you for taking time and talking to us. No, absolutely. Thank you all for uh, having the show today. Yeah, thank so, you very much. Can you uh, give us a little bit of uh, background about yourself, um, where you're from, what was life like growing up for you, uh, kind of the background story of how you uh, got to where you are today? Uh, I was born and raised in Harvey, Illinois, uh, kind of like all a little bit all around the city. Uh, grew up in a three-bedroom house with 23 people in it, you know, so uh, we had a big family, you know, living situations wasn't always the best, but we ended up uh, bouncing around a little bit some uh, foster cares and shelters, you know what I'm saying, throughout Chicago and, uh, like, Gary, Indiana. And uh, kind of really got our break when my mom, like, really got back into school and got to work in and uh, was able to move us out to, like, the suburb area of, like, uh, uh, Illinois, like, Plainfield area, met my stepdad, and, and things just really started going up from there, so. What uh, was it that got you into playing football? Did you, like, play any other sports, or was football kind of just something you – one day decide you wanted to start playing? Honestly, I started playing with all my friends, like, around, like, when I was a kid. And when I got, like, in fourth, fifth grade, I started – a lot of my friends was in the football just like me. Uh, one of my friends, Devontae, was playing football on the football team for the uh, Glenwood Cougars. And I was uh, – and I wanted to play real bad with my family. We didn't have the money at the time. And next thing you know, uh, my mom just came through and – pay for us to pay. I knew I always wanted to play football just because all my friends and stuff was like, man, you'd be good. You'd be a good football player. Then I played my first year and I didn't even get a chance to play in one game. <laughs> and, I, and they gave me like number 99 or something. Did, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, football teams growing up. Uh, like, were you a Bears fan or? Oh, man. No, I'm a Packers fan. Oh. I was uh, I was a Packers fan because my mom, though. No, that way they had nothing to do with me. Okay, so was were you like young when uh Denver and Elway uh beat the Packers? Yeah, what was that? What was the Super Bowl one? That was in ninety seven or ninety. Yeah, I was gonna say ninety seven. Yeah, I really started getting the football when I was like six years old. So that was like right on the cusp. I was born in ninety three. Gotcha. So I didn't really start getting the football until like ninety nine, two thousand. I remember I even got like to real like uh who was on the two thousand uh Madden. Um I don't know. Uh, forgot 2000 Madden. I don't know. We were still, damn, was we still on? We was probably also on Nintendo 64 around. Right? <laughs> Madden 2000. Yeah, that was around the time I kind of started really getting, just kind of started really getting into Madden, uh, and uh, football and stuff like that, like uh, around like Barry six years Sanders. old. Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Yeah. With the like I said, that was a Nintendo sixty four, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that was Nintendo sixty four. Dang, that's crazy. I remember that shit. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, like, my bad. So I then you ended up right going to college at Colorado State, and so was when you were younger. Did you want to like pursue football as a career, or was it kind of something that you just enjoyed doing with your friends? Um, football for me was um. Like I said, when I was younger, I always got told, I was like, by my uncles and everybody, like, kind of, like, in my neighborhood, in my hood and stuff like that, like, oh, you're going to be the football player and stuff like that. You're going to be the football player. And, you know, as that, like, name started growing on me, then I finally got a chance to play football for real for the first time. Uh, it just made sense. You know what I mean? Uh, I was – I played it. Played it very well. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then when I went to high school, obviously things – that's when things started to become more clear for me, uh, exactly what, like what my talent was, and that's obviously when you first start getting your rank of, and that's when I started realizing that I was very different. You know what I'm saying? And in the sport, uh, even younger, I knew I was different, but really, you know, you gotta, you know, I start proving yourself. You know what I mean? And I like to stay humble. I like to, I like to prove to myself, and you know, that'd be the most, that'd be the main, the main thing. Yeah. Um. Although you got, like, drafted um, to play in the NFL and you were signed in 2014 for Denver, um, how was it, like, playing for, like, a hometown, like, hometown, like, team? 
Uh, so I was I was born in Harvey, Illinois. You know what I mean. I wasn't born in Denver, but uh, a hometown team, as in college. Uh, yeah. Same like kind of kind of college area. It was it was good, man. It was fun. I definitely, especially for the guys that was around my age at the time, uh, and everybody. I I kind of like knew what was going on in the city. You know what I mean. I kind of knew what was going on around that around that area, and just getting that same market. You know what I mean? The same thing from college, you know, and that that love, I think it, it helped me out. I think it helped me out a lot too. Just staying familiar and being comfortable. Did going like undrafted like motivate you like to go like go harder and like mm-hmm. workouts and stuff like that to prove yourself to like coaches and like staff? Yeah. Uh honestly tell you the truth, I I had I had this thing about me that I was gonna go hard regardless. You know what I mean? And I think that just because, like, through things I had experienced in life, uh, I've experienced not trying hard. You know what I mean? I've experienced, you know, uh, what it can get you when you don't try hard and uh, when you don't put your best foot forward, you know. So I think just through all time, like, I always knew that I was going to, like, when even, like, the NFL, I knew I was going to go hard every practice. I knew I was going to go hard every snap, you know. So uh, me being undrafted, I don't know what had happened if I went in first round, you know what I mean, if my work ethic would have changed or anything. But if you ask me, I w- I'm always going to say the same. Uh, and I, and it didn't change throughout my six-year career that I was uh, playing five years um, actively. Uh, and no, it never, it never changed at any point in time, no matter how comfortable I felt or whatever. I always like to stay the same and use that same grind. Definitely. Um, so you had like a couple different like jersey numbers throughout the time that you were in the NFL. So you had number 35, you had number 26, 5, and 46. Mm-hmm. So I know some players in some sports like numbers like have significant meaning. So any mm-hmm. of those numbers like because I know one of those numbers repeats twice. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that like those numbers like have significant meaning to you like Anywhere you grew up, like the area, like your home number, home address, something like that, meaning something to you? Yeah. So I, I always try to keep them at 35, and I think 35 was a big number. That's why you probably see that twice on there with the Redskins, yeah. with the Broncos. I also tried to get it um, – I tried to get when I was with the uh, 49ers too, but they uh, – it didn't work out that way. I wore it with the, I got it with the Packers too. Well, five always was my favorite favorite number just because I looked up to Reggie Bush a lot when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Reggie Bush is my favorite player, uh, and just a number five kind of just grew on me. You know what I'm saying? With everything that I was going through in life, so number five was the number you know that I always stick with. And then football came along. I had three brothers. You know what I'm saying? Three. Uh, there were the original three kings, what we called ourselves, funny thing. But, you know what I'm saying, it was three of us. And then I was at my brother Marcus, but three three and the five, it all made sense to me. So I was like, all right, I like this number. So I tried to stick with it. Oh. So is it like – um, so in the NFL and stuff like that, when you're getting traded to other teams, is it like kind of like a deal breaker for some players that so they don't get like a certain number or is it just it doesn't matter if you get signed? No, it's not. A, I don't think it's a deal breaker. Obviously, you know, you were kind of guys like kind of look forward to that type of thing, you know, kind of trying to keep a legacy going or something. But you kind of know sometimes you get traded, you're not going to really have too much control when you go to another team. You know what I'm saying? Unless, you know, you're one of those guys like a Tom Brady and or the upper echelon of the guys. Or if you're just a guy who just want to pay for the number, you know, you get guys like that all the time, too. We would just go ahead and pay the bread and just be like, all right, give me that number. I'll pay you 75 racks for that. Give me that. Yeah. Not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. That's wild. Going back a little bit. So, although, like, for ev- like almost every kid who plays sports, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, everyone, like, probably has to dream of getting the call that they're going to be drafted. Although you didn't get um, drafted in the NFL draft, what was that call like when you found out that Denver wanted to sign you and have you be part of such a historical franchise? Uh, it was important. Uh, I think when I came out, I had like uh, around like 24 to 26 teams off me, like same day contracts. Um, Baltimore being like the highest one, they were telling me just to match whatever number, whoever threw out there. But you know, all right, my bad. But throughout the um. 
throughout that process, I also learned, too, just by me being a young football player, that I knew I wanted to go to, like, a team who can use me as value. And I didn't understand, really, that Denver was going through the things that they was going through because they had, like, Ronnie Hillman and Monte Ball and C.J. Anderson and a pro bowler. So I really had to wait my turn, you know what I mean, to uh, – to really get on the field like I wanted to. So I had to just, you know, kind of be patient. Right. And so like when you're a free agent, it's obviously like it sucks if you don't get drafted, but was there ever like a time where you were like, okay, maybe going undrafted would be better because then I have a say of where I get to play. Like, did that ever uh, come across your mind or? Absolutely. Honestly, tell you the truth. That was one of the things that I was kind of like, it's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, cause I, I just, I just want to play football. I love football so much. I didn't care about, oh, if number one draft pick, I knew I could still create this legacy and create a, something for me that I would, you know what I mean? Forever love and cherish, you know what I'm saying? Just because I was even getting opportunity just to play for any team. I didn't give a damn if it, it was the, I don't even know. What's the worst football team you ever heard in NFL history? I would have been happy to play for that one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I would, I would have been happy to just, you know, say that I made my dream come true. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's why, you know, obviously everything I think did happen, you know, just faith and hard work, you know. So so I, like, for the people watching at home, I've got my Broncos jersey on because I've been a Broncos fan since Jay Cutler, Kyle Orton, Tebow, all those guys. So, yeah. yeah, it's been, like I said earlier, it was super cool that you actually, like, came on our podcast and luckily for you, you were part of the Denver Broncos while they weren't in the situation they are now with missing the playoffs. So what was it like being part of the 2015 team that ended up winning the Super Bowl? Um, honestly, that team was very legendary. That team was stockpiled with just a crazy amount of talent. So much talent stocked in it that it still has lingering players in it that didn't play, that play now. You know what I mean? That, that are starters. You know what I mean? Yeah, like starters and all these other great things. I'm talking about guys who didn't even at that time didn't even put on the jersey that went along to that are having great NFL careers and stuff like that. But no. Oh, sorry about that. That <laughs> did you know what I'm saying? That did have a little that did have, you know, like I said, great careers. I'm sorry about that. But um and yeah, that Broncos team was it was it was special. It was very special. What was it? Uh, so Peyton Manning's also one of my favorite players. So what was it like playing with a guy like Peyton Manning? And then obviously Peyton ended up getting hurt in that season. Brock Osweiler had to come take over. So what was it not only like playing with one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but playing with Brock, who kind of was like an unknown player. Uh, to the, like, fans who really was, like, a key player that helped you guys clinch the uh, home field advance at the playoffs. So, I guess, what were those kind of two experiences like for you guys? Honestly, and if I had to be honest about that Super Bowl year, I would have to say, like, it was one of the biggest adjustments I think people can attest to in Peyton Manning's career when he had started coming on from underneath the center and stuff like that. And, and I think uh, at one point we had started feeling like, Somewhat at the team, we were getting more things done with Brock. You know what I mean? Yep. At a time, you know, just with the fact that Brock was just more mobile, uh, mobile as a uh, quarterback, and uh, he can get out of certain situations that we needed from an offensive line at the time, or whatever the case it had may have been. That he just was a better fit for us at that moment of time because Brock can make was making throws and he was doing things for us that was keeping us in games. Uh, with the type of defense that we had and, you know, keeping players alive for the big-time receivers that we had. And uh, and the injury to Peyton just didn't help, you know what I mean? And I think that's why we, when Peyton came back, it was kind of like a struggle if we were going to kind of put him back, you know, in the, the – I think I forgot what game it was when we just inserted him, when we just like, no, we're putting him back in the game. It was the second it's half. Tough. Yeah, it was the second half of the um, – Chargers game, last game. Yeah, I think I think I forget I forget what it was exactly, but uh, we put him back in the game, and you know he and that's when he retook the reins back over, you know, and then that's when he we end up uh, getting the win and stuff like that. Uh, but 
You know, it, it, that year was a very funny year because our defense was so dominant. That was the best defense that I think football NFL had ever seen. You know yeah. what I mean? When Miller, like uh, Demarcus Ware, and that back end and no fly zone was that was the best group of DBs. It's like when you would like kind of try to make on Madden. You know what I mean? When you put the three DBs with perfect, you know what I mean? Ratings for covering guys, three different sizes to go out there and cover all different types of receivers on the NFL. They 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 had all that going on, you know what I mean. So I was I was just blessed to be a part of that and uh, be able to train with those guys every single day, practice. You know what I mean. I got a chance to get active that year, play in a couple games that season. So it was just even more of a dream come true to only be like twenty one years old at the time. You know what I mean. Twenty two years old, just barely hitting twenty two in that January. I was like, you know, it was dream come true. Go win a Super Bowl. It was it was amazing. What are, like, the feelings that go through and, like, you when, like, the final seconds you're walking back on the field if you weren't on the field? Like, what's, like, the feeling that you get? Uh, like, a, after a Super Bowl? Yeah. Oh, man, like, uh, just to see the – every everybody, the, what's going on, you know what I mean? Just to how wild, like, the, the euphoric feeling you get from it is is unbelievable. And honestly, it was enough to like make me as a as a person, and I don't really get like this excited to where like I feel like it's just like too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm just like to where I just like turn to that person. I just get the staring, and that never I never really get. You know what I'm saying? I'm always down to you know what I'm saying party, turn up, whatever the case may be. But that was just one of those specific situations in the NFL where I just found myself like really taking in the moment and really like just seeing and not focusing on like what I was going, uh, going through a feeling, but just watching everybody like, and watching to the Peyton Mannings and the Von Millers and all these, everything that was going on and around at the time. It was just, it was just amazing to know that, you know, I was Super Bowl champion, you know, and it's just a crazy feeling. People who played 15, 20 years in the NFL max, Sometimes it never won rings, you know what I mean? It never won championships before. So, you know, when things like that happen to you, you know, I never I never take that for granted. Um, so for some people that might not know that um, you are retired from the NFL, so what was the feeling like um, when you found out or, like, came to, like, the conclusion that NFL was going to be over for you? physically or like you wanted it to be over man that's a tough question honestly i'm not gonna lie to you just because uh my uh, exit was a little bit more timely than i would i would have wanted you know what i'm saying but at the same time uh i still have a tremendous amount of love for the game i'm only 28 years old i just made 28 you know this past january january 10th actually but um I still have, like I said, I still have a tremendous amount of love, and I definitely now retired last year, had a daughter. You know what I mean? That was my first kid, my first time ever being able to raise one of my offspring and see it, see my baby grow, you know, be able to see words come out of her mouth, formulate, and her to talk to me and all that, and uh, be around to see that every single day. That's something that I never would have got playing football, and that's something uh, – that I never would have been able to experience had I, you know, been gone every single day, gone for practices and all those other things. I don't think I would have had the connection that I have right now with my daughter. And uh, now that, like, you know, I was raising her and now she's older now and everything, I do I do want her to see me playing the NFL and I do want her to see me, you know, running that ball. So I don't think my I don't think my time would be uh, short-lived on this, on the sideline now. So be ready for a return. When, uh, so... Talking about family a little bit, you hear guys uh, sometimes in interviews talk about like the locker room and like being part of the fraternity of like the NFL players. Can you uh, describe what it's like to be part of such like very inclusive uh, fraternity of the best of the best football players? What's that like? Uh, It's it's actually, it's kind of like, uh, like a being in a band of uh, superheroes, you know what I mean? Uh, knowing, knowing, uh, freaking Thor and Captain America and all them up close, you know what I mean? And and hanging out with these, you know, guys that they kind of like that the world sees as some of the best athletes ever, 
you know what I'm saying? You think about it. I played with Von Miller, Peyton Manning. I've been with Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? I've been with some great, great players. You know what I mean? And to see how human and how, like, you know, genuine, how real guys are. You know, like I've met great teammates like Aaron. Aaron Rodgers is a great fan. He's a fantastic guy. Always so much respect for everybody. Always down to earth. You know what I mean? Von Miller, great guy. Um, always looking out for teammates. Always, always there for people. Our guy, other guy like Chris Thompson and all those other type of people around the league, you know, that you kind of meet throughout your journey and stuff like that. So I'm just happy I got a chance to play with uh, a lot of great guys. I can still call my friends. Pierre Garcon, great guy. Emmanuel Sanders, amazing, amazing dude. Great father. You know what I mean? I look up to him a lot, how he treats his kids and stuff like that. He's been a like a big brother to me, you know what I'm saying, and how he's handled situations and even how he's looked out for me. So, Is there someone that you either played on the same team with um, as teammates or played against that when the first time you saw them, you're like, holy shit, like that's Peyton Manning, holy shit, that's Aaron Rapp. Like is there someone that was – that just left you speechless looking at them like, damn, I'm actually playing with these guys. Honestly, the first person I kind of seen like that in my eyes was Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Aaron, and that was – and the first time I had seen him, we was going against him. I wasn't even on his team at the time. But um, I grew up a Packers fan, like big-time Packers fan. Like I used to turn off like – I used to turn off the motherfucking heat in, a, uh, in the wintertime just so the house can get real cold so I could feel like I was experiencing the same – winter vibes that they was going and playing in. I feel like it was good luck and shit. Yeah, I was a little crazy on that type of uh, tip. But I was a big-time Packers fan. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Aaron Rodgers was definitely that guy for me. I seen him, I was like, damn, like, this is Aaron Rodgers. This is, you know what I mean? And Brett Favre was my favorite quarterback of all time before that, and Aaron Rodgers came. And I'm okay, so I had the same amount of respect for Aaron, especially after winning the Super Bowl. I was, like, uh, 17 at the time or something like that, and I was living in Chicago. At the time, and you know, the Packers winning the Super Bowl, not too many Bears people like that, you know. <laughs> so, you know, going around like, you know, being happy about that and running around parading around about that, that that was that was definitely a great bragging moment in my lifetime. Do you have any uh, guys' just jersey, like jersey swap with anyone or? Yeah, I have um, I have a Zendaria Smith. I have uh, who else? You know, I got anybody else? Uh, Tyler Lancaster. He's from, uh, I actually went to one of the high schools around my home, like uh, where I went to high school at. And that was about it. Other than that, I didn't really get a chance to do too much. I came in definitely on business, came in, you know what I mean? Had to get had to get to work. I was really focused on the playbook too. So, right. um, In 2017, you joined the Washington Redskins, or which are not called the Redskins anymore. Um, uh, how was that transition from going from Colorado, Den like Denver, to like playing at like for the Washington Redskins? Uh, you know, as you go in, you go to a different team, to the teams. You know, you kind of can see cultural changes. You know what I mean? Or you can kind of see up um, up top changes. You know, from GM fluctuation uh, to you know anything. And I just think. You know, it's going so uh, different places like San Fran to Green Bay to Denver, all those places. You know, you can kind of see how the differences in the upstairs and how they keep the building, how ran, how well ran the bit the building is ran. You know what I mean? From the coaches on down, and it kind of speaks on the gyms and the guys from upstairs and who they're picking and what type of culture and tradition they allow to stay inside the building. So, you know, you can definitely tell, you know, which which organizations are where they are for a reason. So before we uh, let you go, since, like, this is an unreal opportunity for us, uh, we want to ask you just a couple questions about uh, the NFL and the game of where it's at today. So start off, um, outside of your, like, being a fan who like like Brett Favre who do you think is the uh actual greatest of all time quarterback do you go with Brady do you give it to Manning Rodgers who do you think's the goat 
And you know what? I, that's a bias. That's something biased. I really don't want to ask. And then I give it to Brett Favre. And I don't <laughs> that in here. And man, start a whole uproar. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I have to say the grace of all time. And I think he's pretty much earned this up until this point. I like I just I just say you have to give it to a guy like Tom Brady. I think you have to give it to a guy who's he's proven so many people wrong now at this point that, you know, he's even proven me wrong. Like I didn't think he was gonna get one this year as a football as a football guy. Honestly didn't I didn't I thought it was gonna be next year. I honestly I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be next year, but to watch him and the way he like just even got better throughout the season, you know what I mean? Like his progression from how competitive and fiery he stayed. You know what I mean? Most guys with that many rings and that many everything, you, you know, you can catch them. You can catch them slacking sometimes. You can catch them. You can catch them and they can be like, yeah, I can do this next year. You know, this ain't the team or, you know what I mean? Or this ain't, this ain't going to be it or this is. But it just, you can see throughout week to week and watching him play that he cared and that he, like, he was on a mission. You know what I'm saying? So, like to make he, I can tell he made believers throughout the season rather than everybody hop on a bandwagon at the beginning. He made he made people believers throughout the season. Yeah, and I mean, being a Broncos fan, I absolutely used to hate Tom Brady, hated the Patriots. Um, but yeah, <laughs> seeing Brady on a different team made me realize that I didn't hate Brady. I hate I hate the Patriots, and I can't stand Patriot fans. But yeah, no, Tom Brady is. I'd have to say it's him, but if there's a quarterback that can, I guess, threaten him later on in the road, I I think it's going to either be Mahomes or nobody for a very, very long time. Man, you know, seven rings, man. That's that's going to take a while to get to duplicating. But, you know, you got you do got guys. You got some couple youngsters in here right now who who making their way. And honestly, to tell you the truth, like guys like Herbert, and guys like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen's of the league make you give you give you hope, Deshaun Watson's, you know, that they, they got some me got some guys gonna give them run for his money, but now it's on you guys, he's it's amazing. It's, it's crazy. Can you uh talk to me a little bit about uh the Broncos? I mean, we've been horrible since 2015. It's just been it's just been bad. We've continued to miss the playoffs we've gone through six or seven quarterbacks since Manning left what like do you think it's going to take for Denver to get back it's not even winning Super Bowls but just even going eight and eight nine and seven ten six like what do you think Denver's gotta uh, get right uh Honestly, Denver as a as a team right now, you know, you like I said, I think everything is ran from up top on down, you know. And if, if you got to be honest with yourself, you know, from top to bottom, you know what I mean. What's going on, and and if and if things are working out, and right now you can obviously tell they have a very big need on protecting quarterbacks. Um, the offensive line right now is very, very, um, very poor. Uh, which it started making a downfall when Peyton was kind of leaving. You know what I mean? And and they knew that the offensive line was going to have some trouble. And they did take a, a chance in the offensive lineman and try to build a core. But, you know, it's very hard to, you know, even draft linemen and predict, you know what I mean, their futures and stuff like that in the NFL. And you, re and you meet some and, and you lose some. You know what I'm saying? So, it's it's a very scary uh deal to deal with and but you know as you obviously see defense is very well taken care of is always going to stay pampered and uh definitely you can use some some inside linebackers for you guys but um offensive line I think is the biggest deal because you can have the prettiest receivers in the world have some great guys out there you know what I'm saying who can catch the ball well can do a lot of great things on the outside but if you can't sit back there and do what you need to do. You can't find somebody who can protect, especially inside of that conference. Uh, you're going to be in big trouble. So, do you think that uh, Drew Locke could be the quarterback for the team, or do you think that they should uh, kind of explore a trade this offseason? They missed out on Stafford, but do you can you see them going for a guy like Wentz, or if Houston decides to make Deshaun Watson available, do you think they should uh, try getting another quarterback like they did when they uh, got Manning in free agency? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I think Drew Locke is a rock star. I think he's a great, 
great quarterback. Uh, obviously, in this game of sports, when there when losses start rolling, fingers get the fingers get the pointing, and somebody got to be to blame. So, uh, Drew Locke, he just got the eyes on him right now, you know. But the eyes need to be on that offensive line, and and I think that they can roll that film and watch a little bit more and see that there's not consistent there's not consistent blocking if there's not consistent time. You know, these quarterbacks are gonna are gonna struggle, you know. Everybody told, said Brady seen ghosts at points and other people. But when you watch everybody not be get protected and you get in and you're not protected, you know what I mean? And you got to worry about doing those other things, especially as a young quarterback who's trying to learn systems and do everything right. Uh, you know, it's very nerve wracking. So I will say before you give up on a guy like Drew Locke, who's showing you that he wants to be a rock star and showing you that he wants to play well, doing big things in big moments, I think you should try to build around him. And get, and get him some offensive line that can keep keep him upright. Definitely. Um, I know before that we started this interview, you like mentioned that you do music as well. Could you play us like a track, like a little snippet or something like that that you're working on right now? Hey, Sabo, they want to hear a song if we're if we working on one in the studio. So. You want me to check it out? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to check it out? That's it. it. <laughs> no, nah, it's a, we, uh, we record a song right now in the studio, actually. As we speak, so yeah, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it legal, keep mm. it legal. It's ready, but it's so we're gonna give y'all a little sneak peek. This song, we just started making this song today, so oh, we, we just think about it. Follow IG, you know, yeah, play it. yeah, all right. I ain't gonna lie, it's not that this is a regular speaker from the dollar store okay. <laughs> about none of the mixes. Don't do none of that. I don't know what's on my face. <laughs> don't ask about none of the mixes. This is this the good. This the good. This is a regular dollar store speaker. Hold on. <laughs> Baby, come check it out. New V's on the whip. Watch how they check it out. Bad chicken, my. This how a lot of gold. Say go. New phone off the lot. Baby, come check it out. Forty k on my neck, girl. Check check it out. Big dog for respect. You will be checking out. Could you went the wrong way? Should have taken a better route. New phones off the lot. Baby, come check it out. She got the turn up a lot. We have to put a more shots to the room. She put my head on the box. I feel like Roddy when I'm in the room. I'm in the form on the lot. Got my pants when I came out the room. I don't look up on the side. I be like, you tell me they put me in the toes. Trying to fuck up the pod. Trying to get me to the back of the room. I got the on my body. How about the cool nigga wasn't the cool? Look at the niggas, they sobs. Well, I got a stick in it, they're like a bronze. She want to kick it with stops. But baby, look up and you might see the bronze. 30 points to my wrist, baby, come check it out. Hey, new V's on the whip, watch how they check it out. Hey, bad chick on my mind, tell her come check it out. New phone off the lot, baby, come check it out. Hey, 40k on my neck, great, come check it out. Big dog from the stack, you'll be checking out. All right. That's dope, bro. I like that. That's a, that's fire. That's dope. Yeah, is that like, a, you, like, is yeah. that coming on an album soon, or when, when can people like expect to see that? Man, I got a mixtape here dropping in the next three months. Uh, I got a album dropping as well. But right now, I'm giving people singles. Um, and I'm be dropping here every every two to three weeks. So I'm a little I'm a little off right now, but we're gonna try to get back on schedule. So is music another passion for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. I love music. I've been doing music for a long time uh, since I was a kid. But I started recording. I've recorded my first song like three years ago. So it's been, it's been real good since. I love it. Definitely, that's dope. Um, is there anything like um, we as Wild Chat Sports or Paradise Chat can do to help you out, like fans, stuff like that? Do you have like a website or Instagram you want to give a shout out to? Oh, well, uh, anybody can follow me at 3KingBibs5. Uh, that's 3KINGBIBBS5. I also have my uh, YouTube and my music name is Jess Capri, J U S T. Dash Capri, K-A-P-R-I. Y'all welcome to give me a follow and subscribe on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Support. So, Yeah, links will be down to, um, 
down in the description box. Um, so that does it for today's episode of Paradise Chat. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe um, to Wild Chat Sports and Paradise Chat. Uh, to stay up to, I'm your host, Mo. I'm your host, Ryan. We'll see you all next time. Capri Bibbs, NFL running back, Super Bowl 50 champion. Also, just Capri, Mike name. Make sure y'all check me out, Paradise Chat. <laughs>